Welcome everyone, I'm Laura Hsu. In this video, I'm going to talk about what's new in the book module here in the Lightroom 5 beta. There aren't a tremendous number of changes, but I'm happy about what's been added. For example, we can add page numbers to our pages and format those page numbers. We can save our page layouts for use on other pages in our book or in future books. And certain tasks have become easier. Let's start with page numbers. Here in the page panel, which is towards the top, I'll go ahead and check the page numbers checkbox. By default, the page numbers appear in the bottom outside corner. We can change that with the drop down here. So for example, I could put them in the bottom center instead. I'm going to go ahead and go back to bottom outside corner. We can also control what page the numbering starts with. I actually want page one to be the introduction page in my book, not this blank page. So I'm going to right click on the page number on page two here, and I'm going to choose start page number. So now the introduction is page one. We can also hide page numbers on particular pages. I actually don't want my blank pages to have page numbers. I want this to count as page two, but I don't want the number to show up here. So I'm going to right click on the number and I'm going to choose hide page number. And I can do that for each additional blank page. Let's take a look at formatting our page numbers. I'm going to double click on page five and I'm going to scroll down to the type section. I'm going to select the page number so that it knows that that's the text that I want to work on. And I'm going to go ahead just to make this very obvious. I'm going to increase the size and I'll change the font here. Now by default, I'm changing the style of the page number on every page. If I go back to multi-page view, we can see that I've increased the size and the font on every single page. Now I think that's generally what I would want. However, if you want to control the formatting of each page number separately, you can do that as well. I'm going to go up to edit. By default, apply page number style globally is checked. If I click on it to uncheck it, and then I change page three, which is selected here, only this page number is changing. The others are remaining the same. Now let's go ahead and get these all back to some reasonable size. I'm going to go back to edit apply page number style globally and I'll reduce the size here. That's the new page numbering option here in the Lightroom 5 beta. Let's take a look at page formats. Now on this page, I started with a four photo page layout and I added more padding in between the photos and I also added a page caption here. Now, if you've watched my Producing Great Output video series, you know how to perform all of these tasks, and they haven't changed in the Lightroom 5 beta. I'd like to be able to save this page layout so I can use it elsewhere in the book. I'm gonna select the page, I'm gonna right click on it, and I'm gonna choose Save as Custom Page. Now, let's say that I want to apply that page layout to this next page here. I'll click on the dropdown, and I've got a new custom pages section here that has all of the custom page layouts that I've saved so far, including this one with four photos. I've got my four photo cells here with the padding and the page caption. I could simply drag other photos up into this page and I'm good to go. Now I would also in this particular case need to zoom to fill to get to that same look that I had up above. Now saving a page layout as, as a custom page has its limitations. It's just saving the photo and text cells and the padding. It's not saving the formatting. That's why in this particular case, I still need to zoom to fill on these photos. When I saved this page layout, it didn't remember the zoom to fill formatting. The same will be true with text pages. For example, if I save this layout as a custom page, select the page, right click, save as custom page. Let me go ahead and apply that page over here. So I'll click on the drop down, go to custom pages, choose my text format. Notice that it saved the cells, so it saved the introduction page cell. 
it saves this text box here, but it doesn't save the two column smaller font formatting. So that's simply a limitation of these custom pages that we can save. Nevertheless, it's still a great step forward in, in not having to start from scratch. The next thing I want to show you is that it's become a little bit easier to save page layouts as favorites. I'm going to go ahead in this case and go up to the page panel here. Under page layouts, which is this drop down, let's go into the one photo layouts. As I hover over a layout, I get a little circle here. That's to assign this particular layout to the favorites category, which makes them easier to find later because they'll all be in this favorites category up here. And favorites can also be accessed in the auto layout functionality. And that again is in my producing great output series. But it used to be that you'd have to right click add layout to favorites. So now we can simply click on the circles. Once I go into my favorites here and I see those three layouts, I can click on the circle to remove them from my favorites. So that's a little bit quicker and more obvious. It's also more obvious how to add text to pages. I'm going to double click on this page. Notice that we have this new add page text button here. It used to be that you'd need to understand that you'd need to come down to the text panel here and turn on page text to get a caption here that you could type in. Now I can just click on the button. I can type in my page text and then I can click on this little anchor here to move it up or down on the page. And then I can further format it using the type panel here. So all the functionality was here before. It's just that we have that button to click on to get us started. I'm going to go ahead and go down to this page here and double click on it. I want to talk about photo captions and some additional options that we have in terms of data that's pulled in for us to use in our photo captions. Now let's say that I actually want captions on each of these photos and not a page caption. I'm going to go ahead here in the text section and turn off page text and I'm going to select these photos. So Ctrl or Command Shift, select all four. I'll turn on photo text and then what I want to do is draw from the metadata from these photos. I'm going to click on the drop down. Now we used to see title and caption here, which would draw from the title and caption in the metadata for our photos. And I believe that we should get those back before the official release of Lightroom 5. In the meantime, what's new is that we have access to even more metadata by going into Edit here. This brings up what's called the Template Editor, which allows us to build in this white box whatever metadata we want to show up. Let's just say, for example, that I want both the caption and the exposure for each photo. I'll click in the white box and I'll come down here into the metadata and I'll insert the caption here. Next, I'll put a comma in here. Notice that it's drawing on the information in one of my photos out here to give me this example. Now I'm going to go ahead and insert the exposure. I would encourage you to explore the drop downs in here to understand just how much data you have access to to add to your pages. Now that I've said what I want, I can go ahead and click on Done. I now have that information for each photo. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the size on this text as well. And then I'll click in the gray. So more metadata for photo captions. The last thing I want to show you is that we have one more paper option for blurb books under paper type. We now have the choice of a cheaper paper standard. The paper's thinner, so if you're going to have photos back to back on your pages, I would suggest not choosing it. But otherwise, if you're trying to keep down the cost of your book, this could be a significant savings. That's what's new here in the book module. I'm Laura Shu. For more Lightroom tutorials and tips, check out my website at laurashu.com.